Hello and welcome to this week's episode of CBTV. Today is quite an important day in the history of Australia, but you'd never know it. Today marks the anniversary of when the Australian Parliament passed the Statute of Westminster Adoption Act 1942. On this day, 70 years ago, our country took one of the final legislative steps towards independence. And by passing this Act, our Parliament adopted an Act of the British Parliament that legally recognised the independence of the Government of Australia. Such events like these are important to commemorate because they help form our nation. Without them, who knows what the Australia of 2012 would look like? Learning about our country's history, its origins, its people, its foundations, is a step in the right direction for a strong and positive future. Our country can only benefit when more Australians are informed, engaged and passionate about what shaped our nation and how each of us can work together to make a difference in the future. And that's where education comes in, and in particular, the history curriculum. Now, it's impossible to cover every event that occurred in our history within a limited number of lessons, but one would hope that at least the significant events and influences would be included. Sadly, the draft National History Curriculum doesn't tick all the boxes. While it does focus on some important influences in Australian life, like Asian history and Indigenous culture, it appears to barely mention many others. The history curriculum does not give due reference to the lasting influence of the Western civilization, our Christian heritage or British history. These elements have shaped modern Australia. We see them in our rule of law, our parliamentary democracy, our system of governance and in principles like freedom of speech and tolerance. Yet it seems that the history curriculum drafters have decided they're not that big a deal. For example, Year 9s can choose to study progressive ideas and movements, including nationalism, socialism, Darwinism and Chartism. Yet yeah, there's no mention of other important isms, conservatism and liberalism. We teach history to the younger generation so they can hear about where we came from, why things happened and what can be learned from those that came before us. How are Australian teachers meant to achieve that if the curriculum doesn't address in detail some of the founding influences of our nation? Young Australians need to learn about our history and the guiding influences, both good and bad. Above all else, our national curriculum should be the instrument to provide that, and not some abridged version of history that is hamstrung by political correctness. This is Corey Bernardi. You're watching CBTV.